Hi there and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through the types of stem cells that you need to know for A-level biology. So just to recap then on what we mean by a stem cell and the A-level definition. So they are cells which are currently undifferentiated. They also have the ability to continually divide and then become specialised. So you would need to have both of those components in your definition, the fact that they can continually divide and they have the ability to become specialised into um, types of cells. And differentiation, which we've got here, the fact that they're undifferentiated cells, that is the process by which stem cells become specialised cells. And we have an example here in the image of a stem cell just showing you all the different types or some of the different types of specialized cells it could become. So there's different types of stem cells and that is um, referring to how many different specialized cells that particular type of stem cell is able to differentiate into. So we're going to go through those different types, totipotent, pluripotent, multipotent and unipotent stem cells. So we'll begin with totipotent stem cells. And these are the stem cells that can divide into any type of cell in the body. So this is the type of stem cell that you would find in the very, very early stages of an embryo. So they're only available for a very limited time. And as we said, they can divide into or specialize, differentiate into any type of body cell. And during development, those totipotent cells um, translate only one part of the DNA, and that is how they eventually become specialized. Now, in contrast, pluripotent cells, these are the stem cells, which we can see here in the inner mass of a blastocyst. And a blastocyst is about three to five days after fertilization. That is what the embryo develops into. And the cells around the outside that we can see here in yellow, those will go on to make the placenta for the fetus. And the blue cells in the middle are the pluripotent stem cells. And those are the cells that naturally would go on to make the fetus. So if you take out one of those cells, they're pluripotent and they can divide into almost any type of cell. Um, they just can't divide or specialize to form placenta. So these are really useful for research. And at the moment, they're researching how you could use those types of cells um, to treat human disorders. Because if those cells can differentiate into any type of stem cell, there's the potential that they could be used to create damaged cells or tissues, for example, replace burnt skin cells, or diabetics whose beta cells are not creating insulin, which is type one diabetes, potentially you could remove those and replace them with um, healthy beta cells created by pluripotent stem cells, or Parkinson's disease, where the neurons in the brain um, start to break down and they don't produce enough dopamine anymore. So there's a whole range of potential applications. Now I'm emphasizing potential because they're not currently used in um, these treatments because in the research they have found issues. And one of those issues is linked to the first part of the definition of stem cells. And that is the property that they have the ability to continually divide. And what they found when they've done this research in mice and other animals is that even when they have used stem cells to create new cells to replace damaged ones, unfortunately, those cells continue to divide to create tumours. Now, the other issue is the ethics behind it, because in order to get these pluripotent stem cells, um, you have to create, if you want to use it to treat someone, you would have to create a zygote, which is a clone of the patient you want to treat. And we call this therapeutic cloning because you are cloning that individual, but you never allow the embryo to go further than the early stages. So it's not um, reproductive cloning where you are cloning to make a living individual at the end. It's therapeutic, so you get the embryo or the blastocyst, and then you just remove the stem cells you want. So ethically, two issues, therapeutic cloning, 
but also destroying embryos, which some people believe at that stage is already living. Some people believe there's the potential for life there. So multipotent and unipotent stem cells then. The multipotent ones have the ability to differentiate into a limited number of different cells. And you'd find these in the bone marrow, for example. And the stem cells, the adult stem cells found in bone marrow are multipotent because they're able to differentiate into the different blood cells. Now, the final one, unipotent, uni meaning one, they can only differentiate into the same type of cell. So skin cells can differentiate to make more skin cells or muscle cells will make more muscle cells. So the sources of some of these stem cells then, I've gone through some of them as we went, but just in summary, embryos up to 16 days after fertilization contain the pluripotent stem cells. So the blastocyst will be um, able to provide those stem cells from about day four or five up to 16. Umbilical cord also contains some stem cells. So sometimes people will keep the blood from the umbilical cord to have a source of multipotent stem cells, along with the placenta that also has multipotent stem cells. And we said that the bone marrow is a source of multipotent stem cells as well. So the last thing that you need to be aware of is even more recent technologies of how to overcome the some of the issues that we discussed with the pluripotent stem cells. Because pluripotents would be the most useful in terms of applications in medicine. However, there are pros and cons. Pros, you could potentially treat many diseases. Cons are, and we're just gonna focus on here, the ethical issues of cloning, and then destroying potential life, destroying the embryo. And that's why scientists came up with this idea of induced pluripotent stem cells. And often you'll see that shorthand as IPS cells. Now what these are, are when you take a somatic cell, meaning a body cell, from an adult who's giving consent, and that could just be a skin cell or the cheek cells. So it's easy accessible um, to get these body cells, somatic cells. And you can then manipulate the DNA inside of those cells by using appropriate transcription factors. And transcription factors you learn about later in topic eight. These are molecules which can um, allow transcription to either occur or not occur for particular genes. And in that way, if you turn on all the genes again in a cell, they are now no longer a specialized cell and you've now induced that body cell to become pluripotent again. And that cell can then be used potentially for treatments. And in this way, we've overcome the ethical issues of there's no cloning involved and no embryos are destroyed. Um, so how they do this, again, I said a little bit about this. So the IPS cells are created from the adult unipotent cells. Once you've then switched back on all the genes, we call that um, return to the state of pluripotency. Uh, and that is using the transcriptional factors. So once you've done that, these induced pluripotent stem cells behave pretty much exactly the same as the pluripotent cells from a blastocyst. Uh, they have also shown self-renewal properties and they can divide indefinitely to give limitless supplies. So you wouldn't have to go through this whole process every time. You could allow them to divide and then you can keep a source of them for that particular patient. So that is it for our stem cells, types of stem cells and application. If you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest videos.